everybody, welcome back to the GravTech Garage, or welcome to the GravTech Workbench. This is a custom made computer bench that uh, my mother no longer needed use for. Uh, it's all made out of wood and made to have little compartments over here and just, you know, be able to do computer work, but it's now become your basic workbench. Anyway, we got a new camera because the phone was driving me nuts. Uh, feeling in better spirits today. I uh, got some optimism. Got my, uh, you know, protection. Um, since I'm using one of the two 360 cameras I've got, I do have a live feed so I can see myself better, which is really nice. Uh, I want to check out, you know, maybe a cool infinity mirror mode. Anyway, um, that's really nice. Just kind of seeing what the uh, camera can see while I'm doing work. A little bit of a fish eye, so it may tend to look my make my head look big. You never know. But uh, I'm not crazy, you know. My mother had me tested. Anyway, here at GravTech, uh, which is you know the subsidiary of Raw Productions. That's all I could say. Raw Productions is my uh, main primary creative label. It's in honor of my father. You know, who's still wishing to realize his dreams, and it's his initials. Um, but also, you know, the short, short, the short name for uh, Raw Productions, just Raw Prod. Anyway, um, here at the GravTech Garage, uh, I actually was able to buy one of these cool little lightsaber LEDs. But the problem was, is it just had an LED in it. So um, after my cat passed away, which is a very sad story. Um, is just, is that, uh, I was able to take her LED laser pointer, it was bigger so I had to modify the body, but I got it, uh, I was able to get it all to fit back together and add the, uh, secondary button, which is for the LED, and then use the primary button for the laser. Um, and I'm keeping the little silver cap on it because it looks pretty good, but honestly that's my most favorite look. Still been thinking about removing the LED and just keeping the lightsaber just like that, but I like the dual LED lightsaber laser function. Now it's a badass little keychain. I understand they were wanting to sell a toy, didn't want kids like um, playing around with lasers and zapping each other in the eyes and stuff, but now, now it's a full functional LED and laser lightsaber. It's pretty sweet. I keep that on me to mess around, you know, play with the animals and things like that, and it's great for protection. Ha, huh, I swear. <laughs> Alright, anyway, told you, I wasn't crazy. Anyway, that's a side little project. Just a bunch of various little things I like to do. You know, builds, repairs, you know, just creativity in general. Um, the raw production label that you see in the intro there is uh, part of the graphics work that I like to do. You know, I like to do Photoshop and video editing and you know, graphic design, um, as well as like, you know, I'm an eclectic artist, so, you know, all of that, ceramics, metalworks, jewelry, it's just if I have time and I'm inspired, like, I, uh, I've found that I can make some really nice stuff. Anyway, uh, today I want to fix this. I am just so tired of dealing with this whole, like, you know, cheapo plastic setup, you know, whatever's going on here. You know, that's mounted in the plastic, and it just was being held on by that, so that busted off easily. You know, uh, just, a, just a, you know, rapid manufacturing. It's, it's, it's the, the symptoms of uh, excessively rapid manufacturing to try to just speed the connection of everything together. You know, there's no consideration of what the, uh, what the machine is going to deal with down the line. So I found that uh, my little... Uh, my little battery bolts that I've been collecting as I have to um, so I have to get new batteries. This would be my third battery now, so I got like six of these. But I found that, uh, or I pretty much, you know, I have a good eye for stuff. And uh, they are just like right on. Like right on, right on. And so uh, I'm basically just going to let this stuff go. And um, I'm just, yeah, I'm going to drill a hole right in here. I'm going to use a Dremel. I got my Dremel. You need eye gear and hearing hearing uh, protection. Uh, always remember, safety first. You need some kind of eye protection. It's good to have uh, ear protection, but the Dremel's not super loud. I don't feel like it affects me. 
Got the Dremel, has a nice and right angle, uh, right angle uh, uh, adapter to it if needed. I currently don't have a vise, and this thing's fairly shaky, not sturdy enough to have a vise right now. And if you wonder why I don't have a lot of things for a garage, is because I've been doing, um, I've been doing school for the last nine years, uh, getting myself through junior college, and I'm 20 units shy from my BA in communication. Uh, but that right there, again, take a drink, it's a whole different story. Uh, ran out of funding, uh, ran out of motivation, extremely burnt out after uh, doing, what, eight plus years of education and, you know, not having a master's degree. Just finding that that's just more and more money, like they just want to profitize off of our uh, desire and our need to be educated, but that, that doesn't matter. Still got three, three uh, let's see, non-advanced college degrees, uh, one in humanities and communication, the other in fine arts, and the third in manufacturing technology, and uh, it's been very helpful in everything that I do. So now I'm hoping to take all that and bring it to you, uh, continue to allow myself to learn, and basically, uh, um, I'm just checking my live view there, uh, just allowing myself to learn, hoping you can learn from me, we can help each other out again, you know, feel free to leave questions and comments. Uh, don't necessarily feel if uh, I can reply to everything, depending on how many people actually start subscribing, because this is a super new channel. And uh, I'm just slowly trying to move into some familiarities and get something uh, consistent going and stuff like that. And anyway, here, as the raw prod does in GravTech Garage, I uh, just improvise, you know. So I got to hold on to my nuts so I can use the Dremel to uh, cut it down to length. I've got my calipers uh, just in case, you know, so I can get, you know, more accurate, you know, idea of, you know, how thick this is versus, you know, how much needs to go into the uh, nut and they always say you need to go like three times the diameter generally it's good to go down or have your thread go down three times the diameter of, uh, of what you're fitting it into just to make sure it has a good fit and honestly I don't feel like I need that if I can just cut it down uh, get this to I'm probably gonna have to cut this down and then basically just get them locked in there with uh, with thread lock you know and once that's locked in, that's locked in, it'll all just be mounted right in there, just like that. And um, and it should be good to go at this point. You know, I shouldn't have to worry about, you know, the instrument panel just uh, breaking loose from its mounts and just freaking rattling all over inside the cockpit there. Um, you know, but as they say, and maybe a note for you, Triumph, uh, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Um, tired of just... just you know, the way plastics, you know, are just overused today, and it's just, I understand the whole glue things together, the press and fits, everything that keeps the manufacturing process moving faster and more efficient, makes you guys more money, spends, uh, makes so you spend less time, but at, at times, sometimes it's just a little extra step, it may cost you, you know, a couple extra cents, but, you know, it, it reinforces the quality of, 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 you know, of your equipment. So, uh, yeah, um, don't wish to do a lot of talking right now. I just feel like I just want to get this bolted down. Maybe get some measurements, get these uh, dremeled out, get this all locked back together. I was thinking about removing the plastic here, but I think because of the way it helps just seat at the angle that it needs to, it'll just help seat itself up there. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get an idea of how, how, how wide that is and then uh, basically I got to take this length and cut it down to half that size and then probably I may not actually have to do these so I'll have to do a test fit and stuff and uh, yeah I just like that it has a little washer and it's just gonna fit right there so yeah I'll have a couple extra screws sticking out but at least it's gonna be extra reinforced and just won't be uh, freaking busting plastics all over you know all over the place just you know just it just reinforces my my dislike for plastics, uh, at least you know the way we're using plastics today. Uh, uh, don't need to go into that. Everybody's very aware of our plastic problem, um, as you know we continue to use plastics that mean something. But you know plastics where we don't we don't have a disposable element of the plastics. You know it's okay because you know these are going to get years of use, and uh, they're unlikely to wind up in the landfill. Or you know if I need to, you know they're you know they don't say recycling on them, but you know they're probably some polycarbonate. Something like that, and just chuck them in the recycling, let them shred it down if they even accept that. So, uh, anyway.
Yeah, just not used to the angle, not used to how much space I have as the wide angle lens. But, um, yeah, just geeking out here. Got my uh, custom tank girl shirt here, uh, given by a friend. Just a very special shirt. You know, she's my, uh, she's my spirit character. You know, crazy, wild, raw, and uh, creative. Um, so, yeah. Let's uh, stop yammering and see if we can start getting to work. Okay. It's digital. Digital's uh, battery's out, so go on manual. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Okay, looks like we're at 13 millimeters. That'll certainly uh, allow us to just divide that. 12 at 6, so 6 and a half, 6 and a half millimeters. So I need to take 6 and a half millimeters out of this. Hmm. Alright, so if I take 6 and a half millimeters out of this, it's it's not going to leave a lot for the threads to be in there. So I'm basically just going to cut this down, cut this down into half. And, um, and then basically this needing to fit into here. And just above, let's see, let's see what 6 millimeters looks like here, 6 and a half. Gonna go down, that'll be the sixth thread. Alright, so we just basically just kind of mock this up. This will be down to, so one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so yeah, it looks like this bolt right here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just leave it as is for the extra length for it to be able to fit in this area and fit down to that with a thread lock. And then, uh, I said I'm gonna start with this. I'm gonna mock it up. I'm going to drill the hole. I'm just gonna get this locked in there. Look in there and just see how much space I have left and see if I even cut this down. I have a feeling I'm gonna have to take like three threads out of it and stuff. And I dropped it down here somewhere. If, uh, you probably heard it tinkle. Uh, or no, that was me. Damn it. Um, but yeah, I've got a little file. I've got a little file that, you know, once, once I get that down, I can get the threads looking nice at the end there. Uh, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, let's uh, get to working. Dremel, dremel, dremel. Okay. Alright, so I pretty much have, you know, a guide idea and stuff like that. Just, you know, gonna get the thing in there and just do it right in the center of that. Where I tried to plastic weld and epoxy and glue at this point, just gonna bolt it all together. Step one complete. Um, to this. It's a little caterwonky, but caterwonky, you know, it's a real old board. Uh, didn't grow up around old people, I swear. So yeah, to get it all thread locked and tightened down after the fact, basically I'm just gonna, um, gonna wait. Um, cause, you know, I'm gonna get the thread lock in there. I'd like to get some glue, but honestly, once I have the thread lock in, 
and I've got it uh, back in the um, the uh, frame, or at least the uh, the cockpit frame. Uh, once I got it back in the cockpit frame, I'm just gonna get some more thread lock in there, and just gonna just you know, and this uh, this little unevenness will figure itself out. It's plastics. Not looking for high precision here. Um, but I also have got. No, I don't know if you can see it. I got a pretty good space. Definitely got. Would it be? Looks to be like five millimeters at least of space. Okay. Oh wow. Cha seven. Woo. Okay, so at seven millimeters, damn, I don't need to cut a lot off of these things. I just need to cut the tips off. Need to cut off, uh... Should have put this thing away. I literally should not put this thing away, but I need more sentences. Okay. Alright. Okay, about, yeah, about two and a half. Three millimeters, we're gonna say. came out pretty nice. Uh, got a couple little things in there I can fix, but uh, they're both at the same length. 
And I mean, honestly, that grounded down pretty well. I could practically just screw it in there. Yep, there we go. Boom. In. In. These are supposed to be standing straight upright. Okay. That should be the same case to this place pretty well. Uh, just a little bit of, um, uh, Um, that was pretty fast and nice, and honestly at this point, uh, let's see. Boom, extra strength. You know, heat or special tools required for disassembly, in my experience, not necessarily. Um, I could have sworn you had to wait, like, a few minutes to let this dry a little before you thread it, but it just says, apply thread locker to thread areas and assemble parts. Refer to technical data sheets for complete information, and, uh, there's certainly no technical data sheets that this thing came with. I mean, maybe, it's been freaking forever since I bought this, don't need a lot of it, still got quite a bit. I don't necessarily need to thread lock these. I haven't had problems with them. I may do just a little bit. Just put a little tip on there, but in the meantime... Boom, 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 boom. I'm getting a little too excited here, so bear with me. Just generally just try to get a little bit over the top because when you stick it in the nut it's all going to get spread around so I'll just let it fall down just like that just a little bit don't need a ton does the job here I may go a little bit extra and make sure it gets all just a nice thick coat on that stuff I am. I am going to just let it sit here for a couple of minutes and uh, let it set for a second uh, before I actually get it back into the cockpit frame. Um, we're going to, I'm going to just skip, you know, sticking it back into the cockpit frame because you obviously saw how I pulled it apart and it just slides into those three bolt spots pretty easily and just reconnect the two connectors and it's back together. Nothing complicated. Just the three points. One, two, three. Um, and, uh, then I'll have that back together. Uh, anyway, yeah, I'm gonna take a break. We're gonna see it back on the bike in a second. Talk to you soon. Take two. One, two, three.